In this video, I want to give you a brief um, look into the world of working with influencers on social media. And this has been a pretty new thing. I think it's been um, gaining momentum over the past few years. And if you are a brand that has a product or a service, there is probably room um, within your scope of marketing to consider uh, working with influencers to help you market your product or service. Now, it can be kind of a interesting um, venture to go out and reach out to people who have a following on plat one platform or another, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, um, Pinterest. There's so many options for finding your target market and finding people within that market that have an influence that people care about um, that can help market your product. So basically, um, it's such a new space that there isn't really like a blue book on how it works. Um, I think marketing firms and agencies for the most part have to do trial and error until they find out, okay, this is kind of how it works. And every influencer kind of functions differently based on what they charge and how they come up with their number and what their audience is and uh, different demographics. And there's so many things to take in consideration. So I'm gonna give you a couple things that are helpful that will help you uh, communicate with influencers um, in an effective way that helps things, keeps things going and makes uh, it a overall good experience and hopefully valuable for your company. So first thing to understand is to figure out um, what to charge and how to charge it. So there's a term that I use in my work because I also like, we have an agency, but I also do uh, freelance influencer work um, through my Instagram. So what I do is I calculate my rate that I charge um, to talk about somebody's brand based on my engagement because uh, I think the old method or an outdated method was using the total amount of followers to come up with a rate. Like, oh, I have a million followers, I charge $10,000. It's like, okay, great. That may have worked back a couple years ago, but nowadays you have these large accounts that have over a million that um, only get about a thousand likes per photo. So you're like, okay, that's pretty low engagement. If you're paying $10,000, you're only reaching a thousand people. Uh, there might be a more effective way of coming up with a number. So. I use my engagement, so likes and comments combined. I usually just do likes actually, because comments are only three to 400 each photo. So I use likes and then I have a, um, a number that uh, it's called CPE. So it's cost per engagement. A lot of people use, used to use CPM, so co or cost per thousand. So I use cost per engagement. So um, I first kind of like uncovered this metric through this uh, influencer platform online where they kind of give you a recommended CPE and they said uh, if you're new to this if you want to get some good gigs start at 25 cents if you're experienced and um, you've done a lot of gigs before and you uh, have work coming in um, enough to keep you busy and maybe you don't want to take all the work then charge 35 cents and if you're experienced or celebrity you charge 45 cents CPE so on a thousand likes that is um, ranges from 250 bucks to 450 bucks um, myself i i try to sit around um, a 15 cent cpe because i think the market recently i got more saturated so to balance the um the gigs between um being decently well paid but also pretty frequent i feel like 15 cents is competitive and it's not charging too much that i lose out on a bunch of gigs but again, maybe a few a month right now that I can get a pretty decent CPE, so 15 cents, um, which gets me, I think my engagement right now is about 15,000 likes per photo. So it gets me anywhere from two to $3,000 um, based on each photo I post. So a lot of campaigns, I want you to post multiple photos as well. So figure out with your influencers who, um, who their target audience is too, what kind of uh, demographics they have, because that'll, um, you have to take that in consideration when figuring out like, hey, my product, if your product is super niche, um, it's gonna matter that you, have, if you can find somebody in that demographic, even if they don't reach as many people as the other person, you have to figure out who's gonna reach the right people that are gonna be interested in your product the most. Because if somebody has a million followers and they just like travel stuff, but you sell, I don't know, like candles, well, it's like the, the, the um, you might find a better uh, return on investment going with somebody who uh, has a hundred thousand followers, but makes their own candles or um, does home decor or stuff like that. So that's something to keep in consideration. And you'll maybe find the more niche people go, the higher CPE they they choose to charge. So 
that's one thing <clears throat> is that's find out a good way that works for both of you um, to figure out a rate that makes sense. And then the second thing I uh, can't stress this enough is to bring the influencer some kind of value. So whether you want to pay the rate, which may seem high, may seem low, um, you're obviously going to bring them value by giving them an income, allowing them to continue what they love to do. Um, or you could offer other things if you don't have a marketing budget that can uh, afford a certain influencer. So a good example of this is uh, a company I worked with over the last year. Um, they're a phone case company and kind of accessory company for laptops and stuff. And they brought me and a bunch of friends down to New Zealand for, uh, I think, just over a week. And we got to do a bunch of activities, go uh, bungee jumping in like the world's highest bungee jump or something. Got to go off-roading, got to see cool places. All expense paid, great dinners. <coughs> Excuse me. Great hotels. Um, but we, they didn't have to pay us our rate, but they expected um, 10 photos, which if you pay my rate at like, say, 2,500 bucks, that's, yeah, $25,000. So instead of, hey, saying like, hey, well, let's pay eight influencers, Twenty-five or thirty-five thousand dollars each. Let's spend sixty thousand dollars and go on a trip to New Zealand, and give them an experience that they've never had before. Nobody's been there before out of our group, and um, they obviously get a better value by doing something like that rather than just paying somebody's rate uh, to go for them to go out and create their own content. And there's more of a story too. So there's so many benefits to doing that system too. Um, but yeah, you can do something on a smaller scale too. You could say, hey, I have a really great product. It's pretty expensive. Um, I'll give you this, and then. A maybe a couple hundred bucks for gas and you can go create some content and shoot a photo. Maybe it's like a custom leather bag or something. Um, there's enough companies nowadays that maybe that's not enough value, but uh, depends on what your influencer that you're trying to work with likes. So use your product um, if it's cool enough to your advantage. And that's about it. So if you have any questions, uh, leave some comments below. Thanks. See you in the next one.